Hey guys, it's Christy and I just thought I'd come on camera because I don't often um, usually just see my hands, but um, I am a real person and I just wanted to thank everyone uh, for watching and for subscribing because it means the world to me and it's kind of blown my mind a little bit lately uh, just how many of you have reached out and commented and just know that I love it I love responding I love having these conversations so um, please do keep it coming I am here on my back patio and I've been painting a little bit today for you so you can have a look at uh, just a little kind of exercise I guess would be the best word for it that I love love um, when I just need to loosen up or I just want to mess around and I have no other real agenda for painting other than to just try some things out um, and uh, it's a little scary because it takes being okay with making a mess potentially or being okay with the fact that you may not like what you do so um, let's get painting and uh, guys just uh, keep the questions coming and uh, thanks so much again for being a part of this little community here on YouTube take care okay guys so here we are with uh, this week's demo doing something a little different here I've been reviving my succulent plants that I've left over the winter and trying to bring them back to life. So I have one pot in particular that is quite the beauty still and survived the winter perfectly. So I thought I would uh, use that as my muse today for a little watercolor exercise. So the point today is to experiment and that is just what I'm doing here. Um, obviously my pot full of succulents isn't full of color yet. So it's just gonna be a lot of greens, which is a little bit outside my comfort zone. I really love color. Um, and I just wanna do something a little different, a little understated, just to push myself. I'm going into this thinking, I'm really not gonna love this. It's okay though. I just wanna try out some different brushes. I'm using this larger number 12 brush that I don't use too often, um, just to kind of force myself to be a little bit looser and a little bit more intentional with my brush strokes. Um, so I'm using some of my basic techniques here um, where I'm putting a wet uh, color onto a dry page. I am using varying pressure and you'll notice my pinky there again if you've watched any of my previous demos you know that I anchor my hand with my pinky. Um, I'm trying to be really intentional with those brush strokes and what that means is uh, pressing down hard when I want a thicker stroke and barely touching the page again when I want a thinner stroke um, like those little little uh, little bits coming out from the edges of the aloe plant here um, I'm barely barely touching the page um, and you'll notice often I'm using my pinky as an anchor I'm doing very little color mixing um, the greens here are just different kind of um, grass, grassy greens, olive greens from my palette. I'm specifically not telling you the colors because this is not a demo about color mixing. Um, I have yet to do a demo about color mixing because I'm very passionate about making sure that you just enjoy the process of painting, especially when you're starting out. There are a lot of other YouTube channels out there that will teach you all about color theory. Um, so I don't feel compelled to do that quite yet. I am really more about getting you inspired, getting you comfortable with holding your brush, anchoring yourself on the page, um, basic techniques, and just and, and, and helping you figure out how you like to paint. Uh, so I'm adding in some of, I believe it's a jade plant, just some of the small little um, petals of the jade plant, adding those in. And notice I have not switched my brush. I'm forcing myself to uh, keep that brush going even for the smaller areas that I'm filling in here. And I'm just adding in, I'm working in two areas at the same time, you'll notice different levels of water on my brush. I will tell you so far on the page, I have used probably, I would say almost an equal ratio of color to water. So I'm getting that nice soft tone when I lay down the color. 
I'm grabbing a little blue. I'm actually grabbing a little bit of a violet tone, mixing those together to start adding some shadows in here and some interest. <clears throat> I'm going to get this stem of the jade plant going here a little bit. I have switched my brush. I'm now using the 1 8 inch dagger brush from Royal and Langnickel. I will put all of the brush sources in descriptions as always here. And today, just for your awareness, I am painting on an Arches cold press watercolor block. So this is a more textured watercolor paper. Um, and it is, it's fantastic if you want to get uh, more texture on your page, you want to be able to use tons of water, you want to be able to, uh, you know, really scrub in, scrub out color, meaning, you know, lift and scrub your brush along the page and not see the paper um, affected in any way. So I definitely recommend picking up both a hot press, which is smooth watercolor paper, and a cold press. Um, in the Painterly Days books, we use a hot press, so it's smoother. Um, and it's fun if you're if you're enjoying the books, for example, and you're you're having a good time. It may be really fun for you to pick up a cold press um, pad of watercolor paper. So what I'm doing here, I'm going in, I'm dabbing in some little bits of color. I'm experimenting really. I'm putting in not only greens. I'm I'm popping in some alizarin crimson, um, just some reddish tones. Now I'm going. I'm lifting out color, experimenting with what that looks like. When you lift, we've done other demos on lifting, you take a clean, dry brush and you literally scoop out the wet color and then blot your brush on a paper towel. And then you can go back in and drop in different color when the paper's still wet. So that's a really cool technique. Now I'm just feeling like I need a little more interest. I'm dropping in a Naples yellow. Naples is a really beautiful, just a creamy yellow, but any yellow will do. As you guys know, the palette here to my right, this is my daily palette. Um, some people would call this a field box, which means it would be great for travel, but I don't like to be, um, you know, tied down to a massive palette on a daily basis. I love a smaller palette. And since I don't do a tremendous amount of mixing, even in my personal work, um, I don't need huge mixing surfaces. So it's a great palette for me on a daily basis. I'm lifting again there. You can see the key to lifting is cleaning and drying off that brush completely before you start scooping up color off the page and then of course blotting in between. I'm going to go here. I am mixing a little bit of color, a little bit of blues to flood, flood in here. This technique is essentially a wet and wet just to review from some of our previous demos here on the YouTube channel. Um, so the paper is still wet in areas, so I'm taking wet color, dropping it into the wet, onto the wet paper, and you're seeing those little explosions there. So that's super fun. So I'm going to start adding some other areas. Um, this is a different kind of succulent that is in my pot. I have no idea what it's called, but they're almost these like little teardrop shape. They're super pretty. Um, they're all like clustered together. So I'm going to start adding some of those in. And again, remember. This demo is all about experimenting. I really wanted to force myself to limit my color palette and do something a little bit more earthy and not as flashy as flowers. So I chose succulents. Maybe you want to challenge yourself. Maybe you're a little bit more realistic on a daily basis. Maybe you haven't ventured out of your painterly days book. Um, and you know, maybe this is one of your first times trying something from scratch. So just push yourself to experiment. That is really what this demo is about. Just playing around, entering the painting with the expectation that it may end up a disaster. And you know what? That's okay because sometimes it's not about the finished product. It's about the process. So I'm just continuing here with these shapes. I have not sketched in here first. A lot of people ask, do I sketch first or do I just go right in with paint? It really just depends how I'm feeling that day. Um, Sometimes I use pencil first if I want to be super loose and not get due to too detailed. Um, but sometimes I use pencil when I want to be more detailed. So it really just depends on how I'm feeling, the subject matter. Today, I didn't want to get too detailed. I wanted to splash around color and experiment with a different palette. So I chose not to sketch anything in first so I didn't get too tied down to a particular composition. 
This whole time that I've been painting, I've been using a wet and wet technique and a wet and dry. So very simply, I've been placing wet color on a wet page or wet color on a dry page. That's really the only techniques I'm using. Um, and, and it really carries me through. You don't have to have all these fancy technical techniques when you're painting watercolor. You can just have a couple under your sleeve and uh, are up your sleeve. You guys want to know, know something about me. It's kind of hysterical. So like all those little, I don't even know what to call them, but all those little sayings, you know, the 11th hour, the ninth hour, I, inning hour. I don't know. I mess them up all the time. I can never get them right. So if you hear me say something wrong in these demos, it's truly because I cannot get those little sayings right. My husband laughs at me all the time. Anyway, so <laughs> there's a little secret about me you don't know. <laughs> but now you do. So like I said, I am just doing wet and wet, wet, um, wet and dry. And now I'm adding a little bit more contrast to the aloe. I'm using some blues. I'm using my favorite opera rose. I know a lot of people are shocked that I use pink in almost every single painting I do, but I've said it before and I will say it again. And always opera rose adds a little zing, a little something to almost everything that you, you do. It, it doesn't have to always just be pink. It can, it can darken up your greens. It can enliven your oranges. Um, it makes the most lovely peachy, um, blushy tones. So I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend Opera Rose, Opera Rose, Opera Rose all the way. So of course I cannot resist color clearly. So being that this is an experiment, um, I am going to play around with adding in some color here. Again, just making up the composition as I go along. Don't be afraid to try it. Don't be afraid of the white page, please. It's only paper. It really is only paper. It's not a tragedy. If you lose a dollar sheet of paper, is it a big deal? It doesn't have to be. That paper, it's never a loss. A painting that you don't love so much could easily turn into a beautiful envelope liner for a note you want to send somebody and you throw it into an envelope and line an envelope with it and it becomes just gorgeous again. So don't feel like the white piece of paper will be such a terrible loss if you're not in love with the painting and you don't feel it's frame worthy. I've seen so many people just not even pick up the brush because they're terrified of messing something up and that's just sad to me. So just dive in, just dive, dive in. Continuing here with a little bit of a burgundy tone. I've mixed that from a nice red. Any red will do, a little bit of green. Lifting out again. I tend to do a lot of the lifting in my work. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably notice um, I do a lot of that lifting, but I do try to preserve some of those, what I would call explosive areas that are so indicative of watercolor painting where the two pigments or the water and the pigment meet and they just explode into one another. So when I'm lifting out, I'm trying desperately not to smooth away all of those wonderful little textures that happen, but to go around them and to lift out certain areas. Just continuing on here with different greens. Now guys, to be honest, I have probably about 12 to 15 different greens on my palette. That doesn't mean you need to have 12 to 15 greens on your palette. With one green, one blue, one yellow, one red, you can make so many different colors. So don't panic about color mixing. So I'm just going in here. I'm liking the way the aloe is coming together. So I'm adding a little bit more in. As I'm painting, I'm just taking note of areas that I like, um, keeping a, a kind of a focal point, which is the, where all the aloe meets there in the middle. Now I'm just playing around, adding some dots, doing a little spatter. Most watercolors spatter at the very end of their painting. I'm sure you've heard me talk before, no rules, forget right, remember joy. I paint that way. I, I tend to break the rules often. I don't worry too much about what is right or correct. 
Um, and I try to just be joyful when I paint. I try to get that out of it more than anything else. So if you feel like spattering a bit, then spatter by all means. If you're painting along, I've said this before, and you feel like going real dark in an area, go dark. You don't have to wait till the quote end of the painting to do those things. Continuing here, evolving that cluster of succulents at the bottom middle of the page, getting that going. I love the little peach tones that are happening there. Uh, the real succulents that I'm working from do have some color in them, not quite that much color, but you know, I like the way it looks, so I'm going to go for it. Now I'm going to add, I have prickly pear um, growing on my back patio that I love, and it, it's just taking off right now, um, and it's just, it's about to go in full bloom. They bloom yellow blooms every year, and so I'm going to add that to my pattern because that's just fun. Definitely going wet into dry here. Um, I'm working quickly enough that those edges where the paint meets the white don't dry completely, giving me a harsh look. I wanna keep them wet. Um, so all that means is that I need to work at a decent speed so things aren't drying. Feel like I need another one here. And all I'm doing there, my thought process is I'm just deciding is the cactus going behind the aloe or vice versa? I decided I want the cactus to go behind the aloe, the aloe. So that's what I did. When you're painting, whether you're painting from scratch on just an open white page, or if you're painting in the painterly days books, you should always be talking to yourself. Always have a dialogue with yourself about what you're doing next, what color you're using, even if the dialogue is, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. Am I screwing this up? That's okay. Um, but you should just always be having a conversation with yourself. I wanted this to look real juicy and real alive like the, the live ones do right now on my patio. Um, they're just so filled with beautiful greens, all different shades of green. And I wanted to make that obvious here. I'm adding a little bit of darkness where the aloe meets the cactus to just separate the two and make it obvious that there's an overlap there. So I'm just adding some dark in the nooks and crannies. Continue on here, refining the shape a little bit. Right there on the edge as well. I'm using the dagger brush again. You'll notice I'm swapping back and forth between those two brushes. Again, I, I don't like to get too fussy with too many brushes, just like I don't like to get too fussy with mixing color. I tend to have at most four brushes out before I start a painting session. Now I'm feeling like I want detail. So I'm going back in with the, just the very tip of my dagger brush. Remember a dagger brush, and I talk about them all the time, it is an angled brush, so you can get nice broad strokes, but then you can also get nice fine, fine, fine strokes um, by barely touching the paper. I'm gonna add a little more spatter because I feel like it over top of the cactus in a bright yellow, really liven things up. All right, let's see here. Another thing to always remember, guys, um, as you're working, uh, to take a moment and just look at what you're doing. Uh, it can be wonderful to get lost in your paintings, and I, I, I teach in a way that encourages you to get lost in your work, um, to have time kind of fade away and worries fade away, and you forget about the to-do list for a moment in time, but also it can help to step back, sit back, prop your painting up and just have a look and just take an inventory of your thoughts about it. What do you like about it? What are you struggling with? What are you, what little moments of surprise have you discovered? Um, and really reflect. And that can be just, just a really fun exercise, um, but also informative. Absolutely. So I'm going in here with more detail with the finer edge of my brush. I can't resist the color. I know this was supposed to be an exercise in a limited palette. Um, it still is limited for me, but I know a lot of you are going to be like, whoa, that's some vibrant color. 
Um, <laughs> I just can't resist. I can't resist. I'm going in to add some more of that jade plant in a different shade of green just to differentiate from the more muted parts of the plant I added initially. Notice I tend to move around the page. Uh, I don't tend to get too fixated in one area for too long. I find that to be very helpful in just developing a composition. Um, again, whether you are just starting out, maybe you're just really getting into the Painterly Days watercoloring books or the pattern I've already drawn for you, but this can even help you there. You can move around the page. Uh, you can certainly stay in one area if you like, and that can be very meditative. But if you really want to explore and see the whole pattern all at once and develop the whole pattern all at once, um, I encourage you to work around the page. Um, it can be really an eye-opening experience and just to keep the whole area um, developing as you go along instead of just developing it piece by piece. I'm just adding some of the, the pricklies on the prickly pear. That is a very technical word, by the way, prickly. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> I am using the thin edge of my dagger brush again, using my pinky as an anchor and just hovering right above the paper and moving my, my hand back and forth ever so lightly. You can get some tremendously fine marks using your pinky as an anchor. Practice it. Practice in the front of your Painterly Days watercoloring book or just practice on a scrap sheet of paper with your brushes. See how many different marks you can make, how thin of a line you can make. I'm going ahead into the aloe and glazing over with a little bit of opera rose, a little bit of a crimson color. Nothing too vibrant. Pulling out a little bit of the color that bled in where it wasn't supposed to. And remember, again, this is an experiment. This is an exercise. I decided in the beginning that I wanted to limit my color palette, go a little more muted, stay away from flowers per se. Here I'm adding in a traditional succulent very loosely. Still using that 1 8 inch dagger brush. Lots of water, not as much pigment. In a lot of ways, if you go light enough with your watercolor and your pigment, uh, you can almost sketch with your brush. Go in with a very light color, sketch in just with the tip of your brush, and then go back in later and add more detail and color. Not sure how I feel about that succulent. Not my favorite. Part of me wishes I could have sketched that in first would have been happier with it. It would have felt more, more refined. But again, it's an exercise. It's okay. Just taking a look at everything, looking around, seeing what I like, seeing what I feel like wants more dimension down here, a little bit more, a little bit of texture. This is also a great kind of piece that you could come back to. You know, here today we're painting for about 20 minutes. Would be awesome to give myself a rest on this and come back to it in a couple of days with fresh eyes. And that's the beauty of painting just for the sake of joy, that you don't have a deadline. You don't have a specific timeline. You can put it aside and come back to it. Here I'm just adding dimension. Um, adding depth and I just remember how beautiful those prickly pear blooms were last year they're not out yet this year but I'm going to pretend that they are and add them in they're going behind my existing succulents so I'm just painting around those you may notice me do this often when I am painting an area around another I tend to leave a little bit of a white edge I don't often fill up right close to the, the other item that I'm painting next to. Uh, I feel like it just gives it breathing room, just a little bit of airiness 
and I love that look. Now you'll notice there I just blotted. I do not blot a lot because blotting tends to give you this interesting texture um, that I'm usually not a huge fan of. But here I felt like, oh, let's experiment with a little bit of blotting, see how it feels, and I actually kind of like it. So I blotted in about four or five spots, kept it under control, and I kind of dig it. Experiment, experiment. It can even be fun to just keep a little notebook somewhere on your phone perhaps and just write down the experiments, the things that you've always wanted to try, the things that that you think about, you know, when you have free time. What would I love to paint? What would I love to experiment with? And jot them down so you remember them. When you have those free moments, you can pick up and give it a whirl. There it is, guys, my little succulent experiment. Thank you so much for watching. 